Miracles have a threefold message. Our scripture reading today comes to us from Paul's letter to the churches of Rome, Romans 8, verses 18 through 25. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope. That the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the king children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in or by hope we are were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes, or others say, who awaits for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. If we define miracles as these dramatic manifestations of God's kingdom breaking into the world and reversing the curse of evil, then we're caught with the conundrum that is in most of the New Testament scriptures, the now and not yet scenario of the kingdom of God. Over and over again, the kingdom of God is described as being around us, being here, being revealed. And yet at the same time, the fullness of its glory is not present yet, that it is to come. Miracles speak of a one-time event, true, but then they also are an anticipation of a greater event to come. In Paul's letter to the church of Corinth, he describes this as first fruits, that some things of the kingdom have happened, and then the rest of the things will happen. And he has kind of a threefold step here. That first, Christ was raised. Second, those who believe in Christ are raised. And then third, the whole kingdom overwhelms the world. And we have similar saying here in our reading from Romans, that at first, our bodies awaiting physical resurrection await. And following our recreation, then the recreation of creation can begin. And that is where the kingdom is going. So it's not a resurrection of an event that happened 2,000 years ago and is past us, but it's an ongoing kingdom that signals and messages to us not just what happened in the past but what will happen in the future and what is happening around us now we are being rescued more than jesus coming here to rescue as the common language of the church seems to say it's souls but redeeming whole bodies redeeming not just whole bodies, but also, in the end, redeeming all that can and will be saved, separating out evil for good, for a future hope and day. So we live in between times. We live between the miracles that happened before, the miracles that happened today, and the miracles that are to come, and the greatest miracle being God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the manifestation of your reign. We see it in small pieces, in parts of the world, transformed by love. Help us to be agents of that change, to be ambassadors of that kingdom, to relish and reveal the fullness of your kingdom coming into glory. 
And while our bodies ache for that eventual, total, and final resurrection, help us to tend to the work until your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always. Goodbye.